let's add our course instructor info to our Sky site instead of displaying a lot of blank space. We've gone to Sites and gone to our practice course. To add information to our overview or home page, we're going to go to the menu and select Site Info. At the top, we'll click on Edit Site Information. We'll scroll down a bit and in the description box, which is our text editor, we'll type our title. When you press enter, you'll see a double space occur. If you want to create a single space, on your keyboard, press the shift key and the enter key. Now that we have our course title and our instructor info, let's use three buttons that most people like to use. We'll format our title first. We'll highlight the text and we'll go to this paragraph format button, which right now says normal. Instead of using B for bold to format our heading, we'll instead just use the paragraph formatter and click heading one. Now our text, when we click away from it, has already been bolded and enlarged. Next, most people want to add colors. So we'll highlight our heading and we'll go to the text color button. Pick whatever color you like that is visible. That'll be easy for your students to see on a white background. When you click away, you'll see the color applied. Try to limit your colors to three so your text is still easy to read. Now that we have a heading and we have colors, we still have some red wavy lines here. So if I right click on Office, I'm not getting any spelling choices. If I go up to the proofread writing button, spell check, and click on it, now misspelled or potentially misspelled words have not a wavy but a solid red line. When I right click on them, I get some choices to replace the present spelling. Those are three important buttons to know. Now that you have your heading and your instructor info, let's press enter and get to a location to add an image. We're going to go up to, the, to our second toolbar and click on the image button. What we want to do is fill in the path to our image. We'll click on Browse Server. This box is a little large. I'm going to make it a little smaller. When you upload an image, it defaults to your course, to your resources area, where all of your files live. You can either create a new folder like I did using the new folder icon, or if you're not familiar with folders and files, you can just upload the image right in resources. I'm going to go to the upload files button, the up arrow at the top. I could drop my image here, or I can click on the select files to upload button. I can go to where I've stored my image, and once I've selected it, it's added to resources, it's already selected and I can see at the bottom the name of the file and how large it is. I'm going to click on the OK button and I'm returned back to the Image Properties dialog box with the path filled in. If this is a decorative item, I don't have to fill in alternative text. But if it's something important, I should explain to a screen reader what it is by typing in information. If this was a large image, something greater than 300, I should type in 300. The height will automatically be adjusted and it'll fit better on the screen. This alignment information is a little more sophisticated, so I would skip that. But if you need to add information about your image, you could also add it by clicking on the captioned image box and that will add a box below your image where you can provide information about the name or the author or the license or something similar. So ours is um, our textbook editor's book, so we're going to click on OK. Now the image is added and we should be able to see our title, our instructor information, and our image. If we need to go back to the image, we can click on it and click on the image icon. The image properties box will appear again and we can make changes. Make sure that this, this lock is there so that you don't disrupt the dimensions of your image 
it can be distorted. So I'm going to cancel out of that. How do we save all our changes? We're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to click on the continue button. Now it'll show all our changes and we'll scroll to the bottom and we'll click on the finish button. Woo, where are our changes? To see your changes, remember we are updating the home page or the overview area. Once we click on overview, we'll be able to see all the changes to our course. That's a lot friendlier image for our students to see when they first get to our course. Good luck updating your course.